Can I just take a moment to say that the Virgo Dragon's egg looks absolutely stunning. I, I don't know what it is, but I love it. Um, just had to point it out because I saw the new image files on the DML wiki that have been uploaded. You know, there's a couple of the new Chronos, all the Virgo Dragon stuff, the new relics have their image files. They look pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, moving on to DML. You can see that we've got two Leo Dragons in our hatchery at the moment. But we did manage to breed the Dragon of the Week last week, which was Mr. Angler. So we'll be hatching him and another Leo Dragon. But, you know... The Angler Dragon, like I've said before, he's been available a few times now, but we've never actually gotten him until this week, which is pretty cool. So he's a Water Void and Shadow Epic. So the glowing light atop the Angler Dragon's head allows it to confidently explore even the darkest deep sea caverns, or that scary space under this trainer's bed when he's misplaced his wallet. And that is my phone going off. Okay, I'm throwing you on the bed so that you don't vibrate while I'm busy doing stuff, but... Anyway, you know, the Angler Dragon, he's kind of creepy, but, you know, those really deep ocean fish are kind of scary to begin with. If you've actually seen these sort of fish IRL, they're terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So, him being a little bit scary does not surprise me. He's not a dragon that we're going to use for anything in particular. He's just a collection dragon, but I don't know if I like him being in the shadow habitat. I'd probably... I think he fits a little bit better in the water habitat, but hey ho, this is how it is. We'll just leave, we'll leave little Beef here to uh, do whatever the heck he wants and uh, not creep me out. Like, let's hope he doesn't go next to my bed at night and then wake me up in the morning because I would probably pee myself. Um, but there he is, cool dragon. He's been in the game for years and years. He was. I think it was like 2016 or something when he first got released. So he's an old boy now. He's like the Fawn Dragon, except the Fawn was from the first year of the game ever being released. And the Dragon of the Week isn't out yet, but it will apparently be the, I believe it's the Red Flower Dragon coming as the Dragon of the Week. So I don't care too much about that. But here we go. Another legendary boy to hatch. I mean, the Leo Dragon is a really cool dragon overall. And, you know, he's basically a replacement for the Lantern if you wanted one but we will be getting that Virgo dragon in three days and uh, I'm gonna be looking to breed as many of them as we possibly can but little Leo here you know we could keep a, a few duplicates of the same dragon but their best use is in ascending them even though you're not guaranteed the highest grade materials with ascension if you breed like seven or eight of them throughout the month and you can ascend all of them you you might end up getting some extraordinary materials because legendary materials are really hard to come by if you're not doing at least 20 fights a day in the enchantment league so you know popping the extras in to be well disenchanted shall we say you know it feels bad but it's probably one of the best things that we can do and in terms of breeding i do want to start breeding for the orca dragon eventually but you can see that we need to have an enchantment level 6 agave dragon and we need a level 5 beetle dragon. And uh, that means that we need to get a lot more enchantment materials for them. We don't have any fire because I wasted them on our um, enchanting pretty much every dragon that we own. So these two are going to take forever to actually get the materials for them. So even though we could technically start breeding for Orca eventually, you know, we can't do it yet. So I'm just going to keep trying to breed more Dragons of the Month, keep getting more of those enchantment mats, and uh, hopefully getting some good stuff. So we will also be getting the new Dungeon Dragon. And um, I don't know, I, do I even care at this point what the new Dungeon Dragon is? Because, um, ugh, I don't know, it's like I'm never going to get one anyway, right? But as of right now, we don't have the info on what the next Bottomless Dungeon Dragon is going to be. Apparently that's going to come out today, probably after I post this. But we'll find out and uh, let's hope it's something cool, I suppose. But in terms of the upcoming events, if you haven't already seen the schedule that was posted yesterday, this is what you can expect. And there will be a chain breeding event for the Cancer Dragon if you didn't manage to get it before. So to start off with July 29th, which is today until August 2nd, there is a Clan Great Dragon Race if you're in to that. Uh, today we'll also have a crowded nursery event 
August 2nd to the 8th is when the mini solo event begins with the reward being the Dial Dragon. So, you know, we will have the Divine event starting on August the 2nd, which um, is basically when our lives are going to go absolutely hectic because we'll have nothing but divine event stuff to do and then july 31st to august the 2nd is the chain breeding event so race against the clock and use the mercury dragon and the lava dragon to breed the legendary cancer dragon um i don't really get how that's a chain breeding event and not just a breeding event but hey i'll i'll take it i guess and uh, mostly for the people that, again, don't have the Cancer Dragon. August 2nd to September 2nd, the Divine Chests will come into play. Use the Divine Tickets to open them. And then August 2nd to the 5th, Golden Opportunity. Spend as much gold as you can for a chance to earn Divine Tickets. And the leadable prize will be the Sparkler Dragon. So, you know, basically from August the 2nd onwards, whenever you see the mini events, the uh, weekend events, style events, they're all going to be... Well, they should really be events that are going to give us bonus divine tickets to open up the divine chests and hopefully get, you know, the really cool divine dragons out of them. Uh, so, I guess for the next few days, just enjoy being uh, not bombarded with so many events. I mean, right now, the boss challenge is about to end. And look at that. We've only had one event on for a little while. How crazy is that? I'm used to seeing, like, 17 events running all at once. So, um... Enjoy a few days of respite. Respite. I don't know. Some people say it weirdly. But enjoy the relaxation time because it will be full on again. Um, I'm wondering what sort of clan events, if any, that we're going to have during the Divine event. Because normally we do have a couple of clan events during the, the Divine event stuff as well. But... I am uh, certainly intrigued to see if they've made any changes to the Divine Event to make it any less boring, any less tedious. Because you know, people, especially casual players, they love it when they see, oh look, super rare Divine stuff coming, log in and get these cool things. Like, if you're a casual player that only plays the game like once a week, you're probably like, oh, oh goody golly, let's log in and get some cool stuff. But, uh, you know, the guys that play DML every single day, it's just like, oh, okay, another another set of events for a full month. And, uh, and then we've got the dungeon to do on top of that. But we will be getting the new dungeon version soon as well. You know how they said that for the first three or four resets, the timers are going to be really quick. As in, I think they said a 15 minute wait time, a half an hour wait time, and then an hour or something. And then it goes up to the six hour wait times, which might feel good at the start of the week, but it's not really going to change how the remainder of the week feels. But maybe it'll incentivize people to actually log in for a couple of times at least before they give up for the week. So, waiting on the new update stuff to come through. And, um, I guess hopefully get a divine out of the new divine event. I'm not holding my breath. I, you know, with divine events, it's basically like, I'm not going to spend money on the divine chess. I'm unwilling to do that because I hate loot boxes and everything that they stand for. So as long as they continue to implement them, I'm just going to do whatever events I can. If I don't get tons and tons of divine tickets and I don't get any dragons, so be it. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna moan and groan about it. I don't care enough. I didn't get Gwandy in the last event because I couldn't even get the legendary. So my chances of getting the divines, if I'm not willing to spend money, are obviously gonna be pretty low. Same with everyone out there. You know, it's not just a me thing where it's like, oh, if I don't spend, I'm not going to get it. It's it's the same for everyone. You know, the divine chests are intended to be premium rewards for people that spend money actively on those events. Like, it doesn't matter if I've, if I'm willing to spend on the clam once every two months. That's not enough. You have to be willing to spend money during that particular event if you want to get any value out of it. And I've just grown to accept it, you know. Some games, they they don't want to give free stuff out to their free-to-play player base. If they can just, you know, milk all of the people that spend all the money and that's going to generate a lot of income for them, 
some businesses just take that route. It's definitely the easiest route to take if you just, you know, bank on a couple of people basically keeping the, the game alive. Because, I mean, if you can force certain people to just spend, like, their life savings on your game every month, the ones that are really gullible, or the ones that maybe aren't too great with their spending, then, you know, you've got a consistent amount of money coming in every month. Can you really blame them for taking advantage of that? Well, yes. Yes, you can. Um, I'm just posing the question as a devil's advocate. Yes, I would definitely blame them for that. It's sort of like saying, oh, well, if children gamble, it must be their choice, right? How can you blame companies for taking advantage? Like, yeah, there's probably some culpability on the, the businesses, as in there's 100% culpability on the businesses that continue to do that. Like, let I me mean, just look at it. We've got plenty of single-player games that rake in so much money if they're just, you know, built well. I, I don't know why this whole microtransaction loot box thing is even still a debate anymore. Just get rid of them. Like, God damn it! I'm sick of seeing them in games these days. I know that now more people are starting to realize, oh, these are, you know, sort of predatory and they, these are really bad for kids. And I think that's my main problem with them, the fact that we all know that DML is mainly aimed at kids and uh, people that are really bad with their spending habits. And mainly the kid part is the part that I don't like, because it's just like, you know what you're doing. You know that kids in particular don't know what they're doing, and a lot of kids don't understand the value of money. So what ends up happening is kids will go, Mummy, mummy, I want to buy some some stuff with gems. And then mummy, mummy will go, no, no, you can't do that because that's a bad purchase. But then the kid will beg and beg and beg and maybe they'll get given a gift card for their birthday. And then they get addicted. I've seen it so many times. So, so many times. It's unfortunate. You know, with kids that PM me and things like that, I've seen so many bad situations. Kids stealing their parents' credit cards and things like that. It is no laughing matter. It can literally destroy people's lives because kids can, you know, rack up like thousands of dollars in debt if their parents aren't keeping proper track of them. So I guess you could say it's also the parents' fault for, you know, not paying attention to that sort of thing. If you do have kids of your own and you're not really sure what to do about stopping them from, you know, ruining your life savings, potentially, or their own money. You know, make sure you've got the parental lock stuff on with, you know, Google Play and the iOS store, things like that. Because there is a parental setting, which means that you can't make in-app purchases without some sort of verification. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I don't have my own kids, amazingly. Um, but I think it's important that... It's like, the more that we, like, the better that technology gets, the more of these random stupid problems humans are going to start running into. Like, oh, make sure that you have the correct parental settings set so that children don't become addicted to gambling. Like, where does this even come from? It's ridiculous. It's like, imagine saying this or explaining that this problem to people from 40 years ago. They'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? What? That's not even a thing. Well, unfortunately for us, and unfortunately for people that are getting older, it is a problem. And even if it's just in your own family, if you've got brothers, sisters, uh, people that aren't good with their money, just keep them away. <laughs> Lock them up. Never let them out. No, you can't do that. They just need to understand what they're doing. And a lot of people don't understand what they're doing with their money. Again, I think if you've got tons of money to spare, you or you know, you have a comfortable life, you've got your own house, you know, if you're like that, I, I think you should be able to spend whatever the hell you want. You know, it's your own choice as long as you put, you know, other important things in life ahead of your spending. But if you're like a college kid that lives off of ramen every day and can barely afford anything but like 10% of your your money that you get every month goes into DML. I, I don't I don't agree with that. Like, sure, people can spend on whatever the heck they want, and people can enjoy their life, but 
you know, I don't agree that that should be where your priorities lie. I guess you could say I'm mother quack here and giving my my legitimate beliefs to you. All I'm going to say is, you know, if I didn't make money off of playing DML, I never would have spent a penny on the game. Just because, you know, even though DML is obviously, it has a beautiful place in my heart, otherwise I still wouldn't be here. But I wouldn't have ever been able to bring myself to spend money on it if I wasn't making the money back. You know, it's just one of those situations where I can't support people that waste big portions of their earnings every month on a game if they need to buy a new car. You know, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying that it's okay to go over to someone and say, Ugh, you spend money on this game? You're such a scumbag. That's not, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying at all, and that is not what you should do. But I think there's a lot of people that maybe over time have spent far too much money on this game for very little benefit, and now they feel stuck because they don't want to leave because they've invested so much money. But realistically, some of those purchases probably weren't the best. And I feel like these divine events in particular get a lot of people wrapped up in that feeling of wanting to, you know, get the cool stuff and... Let's just say logic gets thrown out the window a bit. As much as you might want to support Gameloft and the teams behind the game, realize that sometimes they're the way of them making money is quite predatory. So just think about it before you go ahead and spend like hundreds of dollars on worthless divine chess. That's all I'm saying. Just give it a good think about it and think, you know, would you... How about it? You could have really good food for like the entire month. Like really good healthy food and um, a really good meal every single time. Or you could, you know, spend it on worthless garbage in-game. You know, you got to start making those decisions at some point, and you got to start thinking about them properly. All money could go towards something really useful. So, every time you waste it on stupid purchases, which everyone does, you know, you should probably feel a little bit bad about it. And, of course, we get another scout piece. <sighs> Typical. But, anyway, for now, we've got the red flower now as the dragon of the week, so if you want to get to breeding it, you can do so. But I'm going to be waiting on this new dungeon dragon to see what it is. Because again, we don't have the info on it yet. What could it be? What could it be? The doomsday? Something else? Another repeated limited time dragon like the aquatic? Who knows? Let us find out in due course. But for now, best of luck with all of your breeding. And I hope that you get Leo soon if you don't have him yet. So for now, thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, I will see you then.